and God, who is creator, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A voice came from heaven, you are my son, with you I am well Jesus, a slight smile, spoke from his heart and said, I belong to you. You love me, you like me, and I belong to you. With that, the ministry of Jesus Christ in the world was launched.
That means that we are all like Jesus to be able to hear God's word to us. God's word of you are my adopted child. God's word is I love you and I love you. We are called to do the same thing that Jesus did and respond. Yes. I feel love. And I feel affirmed. And I am going to listen to you because I belong to you. And yet, sometimes our response is not the same as Jesus. Again, Jesus said yes all the way to the cross, all the way to the tomb. And sometimes our response is, uh, with a question mark, or ten question marks. And you know what? I'm sort of surprised the more I hear and the more I experience myself how often that is in fact our response. I mean, so what's the count up to, you think? I think I got 23. Got I'm, 23. Going to, I'm going to pretty well. <laughs> so, you know, here is a faithful core right here. <laughs> And you folks believe in Jesus. <laughs> you believe in God to millions of other people. But it's astonishing. Think about it, your experience. It's astonishing how it's not that easy sometimes to simply be still in that deep, silent prayer. Something we talk about, it, something we don't do that much. Why not? Like Jesus, God does love us and is pleased with us. Like Jesus, we are called to do ministry in the world. And in a few minutes, we're going to be reminded of that because we'll have a renewal of baptismal vows and we will say, yes, we will proclaim your word and yes, we will seek and serve Christ in our person and yes, we will strive for justice and peace and respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. So here's the point of this whole story. How do we get God's help? We say it, we'll do it with God's help. Well, Jesus shows us how to do it. He goes back to that contemplative prayer, if you want to use that term, but deep and silent presence with God. You just can't get around it. That is what we're called to do. Um, you know, Jesus could have uh, looked out some really good prayers in the Book of Common Prayer and said, okay, this is appropriate, I'll do that. And they're good prayers, but it's not what he did in this experience, in this time. He really was simply present with his whole self and heard that voice of God. <coughs> We too can be at one with God, without Jesus. But we too, we too can be at one with God. That's what we believe. We believe that we were created to, in fact, to be just as close to God as possible. That's a yearning that we all have. And you know what? One of the benefits of a faith community is that we can hold each other accountable about how we do it. Because, because then and only then will we, will we really, will we really <coughs> live into a life of discipleship. Uh, we're talking about <coughs> we're talking about ministry discernment here at St. James. And one of the things I like to say about discerning what we're called to do is that there are really uh, three things to consider, and maybe and maybe this process is sort of a way for us to go prepare ourselves to go deeper into listening to the voice of God as did Jesus. And the first step is this. If someone says, um, would you like to do this? You know, off the hill, cafe, there are like 40 ministries that, that we do here at St. James Good Point of Victor. And the first, part, the first step is, um, is it practical? 
is this ministry that it's sorted? Is it something I'm able to do? Does it fit my schedule? Does it make sense? Or is it just being practical? The second step is, uh, is it personal? Would it really make me happy to be in the kitchen? Would I really, really have a good time with other people singing in the choir? You know, personally, what would what would put a smile on my face? The third step is prayerful. Would it be a part of my faith journey and take me deeper into my faith in this community? Would it be spiritual? And what I believe is you go through those three, those three steps, sort of, and the odds are take that in some sort of prayer that we're used to, the odds are we will feel like, yes, God, God is probably calling me to do this thing. And the more we do that, the more we get comfortable in going to God, not praying for someone who is sick or for our own distress, but simply to be able to sit in His presence, in God's presence, and see what happens. Again, Jesus would not have entered, according to St. Luke, Jesus would not have entered into a ministry to change the world if he had not been called, heard the call by God and really felt empowered, loved, and We as disciples of Jesus are called to move in that same direction. So I'd like for you to say something with me. Praise God, praise. Loving and living God. Loving and living God. I belong to you. I belong to you. I feel loved and affirmed by you. I feel loved and affirmed by you. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. Do your ministry in the world. And do your ministry in the world. You receive the blessing, feeling loved, 